This is the review of the Safari Tough Aeromaster. You're probably already familiar with the Safari Tough Aeromaster if you've seen this video. It's a very well-known quiver. It is a side quiver. One of the big attractions of wearing the quiver on your side instead of on your back or on your bow is if you're slipping through the woods and you've got a branch about this high and you have to slip underneath of it, a back quiver would oftentimes catch on it. A side quiver like this, you can rotate underneath of you, duck under that branch, and then as soon as you're past it, swing it back up. Because the material is so quiet, it doesn't make any noise, and you don't lose your arrows doing it either. When you draw the arrows from a side quiver, you draw them from the bottom of the quiver. Here's a large opening to allow you to grab the arrow shaft and withdraw it. The intent is that if you're drawing from the side, if you have your bow in front of you, it's easy to bring an arrow out without a big movement that would alert game. With a back quiver, there's a much bigger flourish as you pull an arrow. Another benefit of a side quiver such as this one is that it keeps all your arrows contained. If you bend over and invert your quiver, the arrows don't all fall out. That's due to this storm cover that both will keep your fletchings dry and keep your arrows secured in your quiver in the back of your truck. This particular quiver I have set up with your storm shield. That zipper keeps snow out of the quiver. If you get snow in there, it'll melt and rust your broadheads if you're shooting carbon steel broadheads. It's not necessary to keep those accessories on the quiver. This Safari Tough Arrow Master, as you can see, I don't have either of the accessories on because it's my target quiver. I took them off there because they wore out over the last 12 years of shooting and get in the way when I'm using it at the 3D range. As you can see, the quiver will conform to your body over time. That's because there is a metal wire running down the inside of the quiver. It's sewn in right here where these two stitch lines come together. The actual material is quite stiff. So you can see you can squish it and it will conform to whatever you're wearing. So if you've got a big puffy winter jacket, this will still conform to that. But it's quiet and quite durable. One area that I do find wears out is inside of the quiver. Let's see if I can show it to you. There's this fleece material. The intent of that fleece material is to quiet down noise from your fletchings rubbing together. I find that on the inside, about right there where the base of that fleece material is will start to come loose as your knocks slide against it. And what will happen over time is as you slide, and let me show you on frame hopefully, what will happen is as you slide an arrow inside of the quiver, occasionally it'll get stuck and you may struggle to get your arrow all the way into the quiver. This is what I'm talking about with the fleece coming loose on the inside. You can see at the bottom edge there, it's starting to come undone. The seams running up and down it are still good. It's just that bottom edge where the knock will catch as the arrow is being inserted that comes loose. On the newer Safari Tough Arrow Master quivers, they made a couple changes. One of the changes is there's this D-ring right here in the middle, the intent being that you can clip it to your backpack. I don't like that. I find that it wobbles too much. What I will do instead is I'll take my backpack and use the side load tensioner straps and put one right below this pocket and one right above it. That way it sits really nicely on the backpack. This is what I'm talking about with the backpack mount. As you can see, I have one strap over the pocket and one strap under the pocket. Wearing my pack, it stays out of the way cleanly. I can turn around and walk through the woods just fine. If I want to access an arrow, I don't have to take my pack off. I can unzip the zipper, withdraw my arrow, knock it, shoot it, whatever I need to do. I can also reinsert my arrow into the quiver in this position without having to take it off my pack. For arrow capacity, this quiver is listed as holding 6 broadheads or 12 field points. I find you can fit a lot more than that. For example, right now I've got 13 broadhead arrows in here. As you can see, they get a little squished in. With trad veins, I find that that doesn't affect them. They don't lay over too bad, but with feathers, you will find feathers start getting squished down if you leave them in there for too long. On the other end, inside of these quivers, you've got a foam pad. That foam pad is replaceable because it does get worn out. If you don't put your broadheads back in the same spot every time that foam pad gets chewed up really badly, you can make your own, just cut a little piece of sleeping pad foam and fit it in there 
but it honestly doesn't matter that much. I keep this quiver for hunting only, so I only put broadhead arrows in here. If I ever want to put blunts in here, instead of putting the blunt in, I'll stick it in upside down so the hex blunt will be up at the top and the arrow knock will sit at the bottom. And I find that that keeps it really well organized and I know which arrow is going to be broadhead and which one's going to be a field point or a blunt, depending on what I'm doing, by whether I grab fletching or whether I grab arrow shaft. All right, for color patterns, this is the newer model. This is in Strata Camo. This is the older one. It's in True Timber XD. I find that the Strata Camo looks really green when I'm looking at it, but once it's in the wood, it does a good job of resembling like a rotten log with some moss. I find that these light patches are really important, and I wish that the True Timber had a little more of that. This one does a really good job in my particular area because I've got a lot of aspen that fall down and start to rot really quickly and it blends in quite well with those. This quiver I find, especially towards dark, you get kind of a greenish hue. It looks gray right now and I like gray in camouflage patterns for my areas, but I don't like this particular camouflage pattern quite as much. With that said, deer don't see green. They see in shades of black and gray, so it probably doesn't matter, but just a little nitpicky preference of mine. 